Um, who I am, just really quick, I'm a software engineer, a chef, over the last six months I've been focused on some inspect related projects, compliance kind of things. Um, and what I'm going to talk to about today is just a little bit about infrastructure testing, and then I'm going to show you some really awesome tooling for doing infrastructure testing, which is kind of the biggest part of it. Um, so what is infrastructure testing? Do all of you kind of, are all of you kind of familiar with infrastructure testing? Yeah, mostly. So it's traditionally done, been traditionally done with kind of one-off things manually. Then, of course, all the config management tools have made it easier to do it. But people are using test kitchen, server spec, other kinds of things to do infrastructure testing right now. And it's going well, but integrating that into your pipeline is a whole other story. And just making those tests as solid as we can has been kind of hard. Um, so at Chef, we've been working to make that a little bit easier. So I've got a question for you. This is kind of the audience participation a little bit. So what kind of tests do you guys usually do for your apps? Unit tests. Yeah. Right. So you run those tests after you've deployed them before. Before, right? So what about your infrastructure tests? Are you running those before you deploy? Some of them? <laughs> yeah. A lot of people probably not. So we should integrate those into our continuous integration pipeline, right? A continuous integration system. So this is a screenshot of a CI pipeline that we have at Chef, part of Automate. So I just kind of grabbed a screenshot of a CI yeah, pipeline for this. So we've got our unit tests running. And they're running great. They're in the pipeline. But what we can do is we can create something so that we can easily run these within our pipeline, easily run the infrastructure tests within our pipeline, and then get a report each time before it goes out so that we always know if our infrastructure is safe or not. Because nobody wants to hear their infrastructure is failing at midnight. It makes Kelly very sad when Kelly has to get up at midnight to fix some failing infrastructure. It's your story. So, we kind of know about infrastructure and we like infrastructure tests, but what kind of tooling right, are you all using right now for infrastructure tests? Server. Right. The so server spec, test kitchen is kind of the usual answer there. So there's been some new tooling in the works for the last couple years, and that's Inspect. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Um, so Inspect is an open source framework for testing your infrastructure, and it's a command line tool. You can do whatever you want with it. It's platform agnostic. We don't care. You can run it, and you, Inspect doesn't care if you're using Chef, Ansible, Puppet. You can test your infrastructure with SSH, WinRM, Docker. Inspect is standalone and doesn't care what you're doing. We just want you to be able to do the thing. You can test your AWS security groups with Inspect. So how many of you have had problems with OpenSSL in the last year or so? I actually think I saw a post. Yeah, I saw a post right yesterday that there were more vulnerabilities coming up. Things that people were working on doing an inspect profile for it. Um, I think it came out yesterday or a couple days ago. So we all kind of came up with our own solutions to figuring out those things. But this is what an inspect example is like. You guys are probably pretty familiar with it. It's pretty easy to read. You've seen this kind of thing with server spec, with R spec. It's the same stuff. Um, so, I'm going to go into a little bit about how we use Inspect, and then I'll go back and talk about that. Because that's just a describe block, and that's cool, but there's so much more you can do with it. So, Inspect is a gem. You just gem install Inspect. We don't put anything on your production server, just run it via SSH WinRM. So, it's just a tiny gem you're installing. And you run it in the command line, if you choose to, with Inspect Exec. So, you're going to get a little bit of an output like this. If you're just running describe blocks, you'll see something like that. That just tells you what it was, did it pass, how many failed. It's a nice, easy, simple way to run it. Um, and if you notice, in the last slide, there was a little part there that says target local. So that target local is going to tell you where you're running your tests. So if you run it against other places, you'll see that the, uh, the little target changes there. So you can run it against your Ubuntu, against your Zendos, whatever. I'm going to show you a little bit about that. So I, well, 
if my computer wants to obey me. There we go. I'm going to show you a little bit about this. So I had set up a couple, um, I provisioned a couple little machines before I got here. So you can see in our Vagrant file, I have two machines here. One was set up with the WordPress simple role. The other one was set up with our WordPress. That's our secured and our Ubuntu 12.04. So if we go through and we look at those roles, you'll see the WordPress simple is just doing WordPress, Nginx. It's got nothing special on it. But if we take a look at our secured machine, we'll see that we linked it up with a few more things. I'm going to give you guys the links for those in a minute. But just for now, just know that we beefed it up with some other chef recipes to just make it a hardened server, as we call it. So if we go through now and we say we can use inspect not only to run the test, but to also check what platform we're running on. So if we inspect, no, that's not right. Hold on. Okay. So if we check on our Ubuntu machine, we're going to see that inspect detect. You can ignore all those unresolved specs. Apparently, I have issues with it. Um, and you're going to see that it tells us exactly what we're running on, right? So if we do the same thing for our secured machine, we should get the same output because they're the same thing. They're just a little bit configured, a tiny bit different with their rules. Take a second because I have jam And another second. There we go. Sorry. Um, okay, so we see that it's the same thing. So now we have in here something called test OS hardening. That's what Inspect calls a profile. But what we're really interested is in is just looking at what's in there. So right now, if we go into, we list out what's in test OS hardening. We'll see there's a controls part, and that's the part we're really concerned with right now. We'll figure out the rest of it later. <clears throat> so if we list out there, there's a few different uh, files in there with some tests. We can check out this first one. It's kind of a big file, so we're just going to take a quick look just so that you know what I'm testing things with. So you can see in this file we've got some Etsy groups and password -y stuff. We have some login depths that need to be defined. We're making sure about, you know, execution rights, all that stuff, the R hosts. And now we can see how our Ubuntu machine kind of pops up there. Because, OK. So we're going to run that profile against that machine that we provisioned, and we see that we've got a few failures. It's not doing so hot, and we can see these failures right here, right? So we know we've got some stuff going on. If we run it against the hardened server, we should see some different outputs because we took care to actually make sure that one was set up. So come over here. And here we'll see, hopefully, that everything passes. Because that was the server that we provisioned with all the extra ones. And it's going to take an extra little second here. There we go. 45 successful, zero This should be at the top, but we'll do that later. Um, so that's kind of our my example of like how we run Inspect. So that you can see what the difference is and why it's important. Those profiles that I told you I was going to give you the links for, they're there. Um, that's just some different chef, a chef cookbook and then an inspect profile that we have up. Um, so the whole thing about the describe block, we've seen these describe blocks before. We've been using server spec, our test kitchen, all those things to write. So what's so special about inspect? The thing about inspect is that it makes it really easy to understand. Because inspect has a concept of a control. So a control is basically like a wrapper around that describe block that makes it easy for everybody to understand what's happening. 
you can give it an ID, and then you can give it an impact. And the impact is it's what tells you how bad the test paper is, for lack of better word. We're saying if you have an impact of 0.3 or less, it's a minor failure, 0, 0.4 to 7, or 4 to 6 is going to be like a major, and then 7 to 1.0 is a critical thing. So that way you can decide each time in your test, in your controls, how important this one is. Because not all of our infrastructure tests are going to pass all the time in real world. So this way we can decide what actually stops our pipeline and what just kind of tells us, oh, we need to take a look at that. The other cool thing is that you're able to include a title and a description. So anybody who comes in can see easily what this test is for. Because as much as a lot of us can read these tests, a lot of people can't read these tests or don't know why. Or even if you can read the test, you might not know why we should do it. And so including that title and description allows everybody to communicate clearly across the organization because we can tell everybody, well, hey, look at the description. If they need to know why we need to run these tests and why it's important. But oh, wait, there's more. Um, so Inspect has a lot of different commands. And I'm just going to go over a few more kind of cool things with it. We saw the Inspect Detect earlier. We can use that to check out what's happening on all of our systems, um, anything that we're running before we run it, so that we know what operating system details we have. Inspect also has um, a cool thing called the Interactive Debugging Shell. And it's the Inspect Shell. So what you can do is you can go into Inspect and you can type out the Inspect Shell, and it'll tell you anything you want to know. You can run it against the transport too. So if you want to run it against that provision machine, you just do inspect shell dash T, same thing as before. And you're going to find out anything you need to know. So you can check on all the things on your machine uh, without actually running the test if you're just kind of <coughs> checking out things. It'll also help you write the test because you can get some help on all the resources that is my test. Uh, so Another cool little thing is that when we've got inspect, we can actually decide if you've got, say, a test, and you need to just check if one of them passes. You don't have to go through the whole thing of making sure that this one has this impact and this one has that impact here. Sometimes we just want to check if one thing passes. One of the things we can do for that is doing a describe dot one. And describe dot one will pass if either condition passes. So it'll be marked as passing if the SSH config, in this case, uh, the protocol is three or the protocol is two. So that allows us to have a little bit more flexibility in our tests. And it allows us to have some more kind of options. Ah, wait. <laughs> There's more. <laughs> So the profile, I mentioned this just kind of in passing earlier, Inspect has a concept of a profile. So what a profile is, is a collection of tests. So you have your file, your test.rb, and you have a collection of tests in this file. Now, in your collection of tests, that's great, but then um, what the Inspect profile does is it takes that collection of tests, and then you have an inspect.yaml at the root. And that's going to tell you the metadata about the profile. So that's going to tell you, you can give it the name, the which platforms it supports, so that you make sure it only runs on the platforms it actually supports, so you don't get false failures. And you can do, um, and you can check that profile with inspect check. You can also bring up a new profile with inspect name. For example, if we were to Inspect in it. Test. You'll see we created a directory there. So we, you'll see we've got an inspect YAML and we have our controls folder set up. And inside of our controls folder then is where we would put our tests, for example. So right now it's just set up with a nice little example so that you know what to do, basically. But this is where you would modify all the tests and then you could do whatever you wanted to the inspect YAML to tell everybody why this profile is important 
and all of that good information. So, one of the other cool things about Inspect having this concept of a profile is that it allows you within a larger organization, sometimes you'll have certain profiles that need to be run in certain times. And um, we can use the inheritance feature of Inspect to describe which profiles need to be run when and actually go ahead and modify any tests that are in them. So, sorry I keep doing that. Um, okay, so for example, we have in the root of inspect, we have a folder called examples inheritance that just kind of shows us what this does. So if we cat out the example in here, we'll see that we're saying to include the controls from profile, and what we do is in the inspect YAML, we tell them where this profile is. And we're going to skip the control temp 1.0, but we're going to set the control for Gordon 1.0 at an impact of zero. So we can modify all of the profiles so that they follow exactly what we want out of it, so that we're not stopping on silly failures or failures that didn't matter. We can say only run it if it's on this, this if it's on Ubuntu or if it's on Debian, anything we want. Um, So for those of you that have been using Test Kitchen, um, all you have to do is add inspect into your verifier as your verifier, and then you can use it with all of your same Test Kitchen things that you've been using. And you'll see that there's a little part here that says Format JSON. And where that's useful is if you're going to read in those tests and you don't want just that CLI output, you can get a little bit better with it. So, for example, um, so if we do inspect exec, and we do the, uh, what is that called again? Yeah, that one. Inspect exec examples dash dash pro, uh, examples profile, and then we do a format JSON. We're going to get, instead of that CLI output that we were getting before when we just run this, we're actually going to get a full JSON format. And as you can see, by the way, this has a bit of a different test output. That's because we consider tests to be described blocks. And then anything that's from an actual profile that has controls, that's a defined control, is going to be called the profile summary. So the test summary is going to count all the tests in your file, but you're only going to see that if you include anonymous described blocks that don't have that wrapping control. Um, but what's cool about this is that we do a format JSON, then we can output it to JSON and we can use it to kind of visualize all those results. So if we type it to JQ, it'll be a little bit nicer. And we can see that we have all of our results here. And it's a pretty simple structure. It's just the version, so the version 100 beta 1 here. We're releasing Inspect 101 Monday. <laughs> um, and we've got our profiles. It'll tell us everything we need to know about our profile, what it supports, so where this profile should run. That way we don't run anywhere we don't need to. And then it'll have our controls. And each of those controls then, because you might have a few different tests in your control, is going to have a results array where you're going to have all of your results. So that's what makes it kind of easy to consume, especially if you're working with a build system and a UI, and you want everybody to kind of clearly see what you need and what's been passing and what hasn't. That's where you can kind of uh, use that to just show them the whole deal without them having to run, without them having to look at the CLI output all the time. Um, which is kind of what we did with the compliance server. Full disclaimer, it costs dollars. I know that, you know, that costs dollars, so folks But that's kind of what we did with these. For those of you that saw, um, when I was running that profile earlier, you might have seen some CIS things, for those of you that are familiar with CIS. So that's another thing that, I'm sorry, cost dollars, um, that 
I, we have an algorithm that we worked on a couple quarters back to translate all of those CIS profiles. If you've ever seen a CIS profile, it usually has this wonderful XML with these oval and XCCDF files that you have to track through the whole way. Not very pretty work. Um, but we translate those into InSpec with our InSpec SCAP algorithm. And so this is just an example of like what you can do with that format JSON thing. You can show people like, oh, we've got these profiles. Oh, these ones failed, these ones didn't. Um, and yeah. If you'd like to explore some more, go to InSpec. Yep, InSpec.io. Coming really soon. We're releasing on Monday, and I tried to get them to make it by today. <coughs> they have a tutorial, but they couldn't. So on Monday, go to Inspect.io, because right now it's in the works. Um, and yeah, I hope that wasn't too fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and what?